Honestly, I'm just out of ideas today, and um, I have a haul video, but I don't want to post two haul videos in a row. So today, you get whatever this is. I wanted to talk about the books today because I have somehow read 50 books in the first five months of this year. So the very first book I read for the year was Where Dreams Descend, and that book was read for the Buzzwordathon, which is now a yearly thing, and every month has a different theme. And I had the um, Alcrate edition that I got last year, Where Dreams Descend is very good. So I'm looking forward to the sequel that comes out later this year, and I am fingers crossed that Alcrate does a sequel version, because it's a duology, so it makes sense. But the book they gave out was a naked hardcover with like foiling on it, and it's so beautiful. Um, and I just want both of them. You know what I'm saying? Like, they look so good together. So, Where Dreams of Sin was the first book I read. I, next, I read Radio Silence, which I thought was very beautiful, and I think it would have been more impactful for me if I had read it in, like, 2013 to 15. Um, I'm not going to say it's, like, 2010s and stuff, like, when I was in college, but I still think 2013 to 15, me, would resonate with that message better. But it was really good. Um, I read The Death of Vivek Oji um, on audiobook. It was amazing, stunning, made me cry. Um, I need my hands on like a physical copy immediately. I read Angel Fall by Susan E. And it still remains one of my favorite books. Um, it just, I don't know, man. It just works. <laughs> it's, it's an old book, but it works. And I've never finished the series until this year because those are coming up later. But Angel Fall by Susan E. If you're looking for like Fallen Angel, like Enemies to Lovers, dystopian stuff. Very good. Uh, I read Twelfth Night, and I read Twelfth Night because it was Twelfth Night. It was January 6th, which is the traditional last day of old Christmas, and so I kind of traditionally read Twelfth Night on that day. It's one of my favorite Shakespeare, so it's usually not much of a trial to get through it. I also read A Midsummer Night's Dream, again, for the buzzword of thon within that first week, and I read World After, which is the second book in the uh, Angel Fall series. And I should note that in, at that point, I only had the trilogy on my Kindle because that was the only place I could afford to find it. Um, the next thing I listened to on audiobook was Beowulf, the new translation. And it is so great. It, I, I want to have students experience it because it, it's such an approachable way to say the language. It's like these these bros hanging out in a bar and one of them just says all right so listen and he starts telling the tale of his bro like Beowulf who killed this monster and slayed his mother and then was defeated in a dragon you know defeated by a dragon in this like battle and it's just it was so nice to listen to and it only took like two hours so definitely highly recommend that audiobook it's beautifully narrated I read The Colorado Kid by Stephen King not one of my favorites and then I finished the Angel Fall, like, uh, Penrin in the End of Days series uh, with End of Days by Susan E. And then I read the only art, I think this is the, I think this is the only art I've read this year, and it's because it was added to my Kindle last year in December, and I hadn't got around to it, and that is The Wolf in the Woods thing by Ava Reed, and I highly recommend it. It is beau beautiful. It's based on Jewish folklore, uh, like the story of Esther is in there, which was really nice for me because I love Esther. Um, and it has, again, that enemies to lovers sort of thing. Um, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's just beautiful and like cold and atmospheric, but it's like, you need to, you just need to look up reviews. You just need to look up reviews by it. It's going to be a really big hit. I think once like it gets out, plus the cover is amazing. People are going to love this just because it's very photogenic, but the wolf in the woodsman was very, very good. Um, the only art that I've read, I think, uh, this year. The next book I read was <laughs> because I could read it on Kindle Unlimited and borrow it, and uh, it's Ice Planet Barbarians because I, I needed to hear the hype. I needed to I need to experience the hype, and you know what? You, you get what you paid for, I guess. Um, you you just you get what you signed up for with the Ice Planet Barbarians, and that's all I'm gonna say about that. The next thing I listened to on audiobook was King and the Dragonflies, and that one was really beautiful. I thought the audiobook was lovely, um, and it did almost make me cry. It was very cute, um, and I think that's one that's appropriate for high school, even though it seems like it's written for a middle school audience, um, but I would probably try to keep it in my high school classroom. 
The next thing I borrowed was Last Final Girl by Stephen Graham Jones, and it was weird. I really enjoyed it, but I think I started enjoying it at the last, the last part, like the last few chapters really, really kicked into gear, and the things that I appreciated about Night of the Mannequins and um, The Only Good Indian really started coming into play. But it's just such a nice love letter to, like, horror movies and the final girl uh, kind of idea that I think it was very well done. I think it would make a successful, like, Netflix series. And um, it was just really good. Also, Stephen Graham Jones keeps liking my reviews on Goodreads. Sir, please stop reading reviews on Goodreads. <laughs> i got to move a little bit faster. It's going to take forever. The next book I read was Margaret Atwood's Alias Grace. That was really good. Really slow. Atwood's take a while to get into. Uh, to Kill a Kingdom was what I read next, um, and that's sort of like The Little Mermaid, but like they both want to kill each other, and I don't think that was resolved very well. I don't think when you go into something where both people know they have to kill the other thing, you can have the love story like they did, but I think they did a decent job at it. I mean, it's it, it's a very successful mermaid YA, and what more could you want? The next thing I read was called Come As You Are, which is a Christian YA novel uh, based around a girl joining a troupe of actors putting on God's spell. And um, I was in God's spell a couple years ago, and um, it just, it was really nice. It's actually a surprisingly good little book. I, I don't think I hated it, um, but I borrowed that on Kindle Unlimited, too. I did love the next one, though. I finally read Cemetery Boys, and it absolutely lives up to the hype. It was so good. Um, I read Stone Mattress by Margaret Atwood. It's just a collection of short stories. A lot of horror in there. Like, actually some scary kind of stories in there, which I really appreciated. Love that. The next thing I listened to was When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. And that was for the Literally Dead Book Club. And it was so good. It was so good. And both the voice actors that do the two uh, point of views were amazing. Um, would highly recommend if you can't get your hands on the paperback or the hardcover or any kind of edition of it. Like the audiobook is really, really solid. And uh, and it's a good story. It's like really scary and it pisses you off. Like what happens in there to this character and her community pisses you off, especially if you are from somewhere that is like a small town and you've seen the efforts of gentrification in your area. I'm I'm in kind of a rural southern town that's mostly run and owned by like two old white guys. So it's not like gentrification happens here. They want it to stay the way it is. But I can see it happening in other areas in towns close to us where people who were in affordable places and had a community there are getting bought out by people that make it like niche and modern and cutesy and then charge like four times the amount it normally costs to live in that area. And that's just messed up. It's really messed up. Like you want to see neighborhoods thriving and flourishing, but not at the expense of getting rid of the people who actually live there and made it a community. But once again, I'm getting off topic. Other people have said this very well. Go watch the live stream where they discuss this book. I think they went into detail about a lot of these things. Um, but just know that that's, that's a topic that's really well done in this book. The next thing I read was Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. That book made me cry. It was just so good. It was just so good. And I, I don't have time to talk about it. I, I just don't. Maybe I'll talk about my favorites at some point from this first half of the year. But that was just so beautiful. Um, I read a lot of books about grief. And I'm still reading a lot of books about grief. I'm reading um, Rich People Problems right now, which is the third and final book in the Crazy Rich Asians series. And it's literally about a death. Or like the potential of death. So I'm like, wow, I can't escape grief this year. Noted. I actually finished three audiobooks in a row because they were very short audiobooks and I was listening to them as I was physically reading these other books. And that is A Thousand Ships, which is sort of like uh, the play Trojan Women and the book The Silence of the Girls, where it takes the females from the um, Iliad and the Odyssey and gives them a voice. And I thought it was really good. I, th I thought it was really well done. Um, some interesting pronunciation of names. Um, but I will not argue with this person who's clearly a scholar. And I'm not. I just think they were wrong. The next one I listened to was Daisy Jones and the Six. It, it was alright. I don't like the ending. I, I just, I don't like that kind of like fix it up at the end ending. But I loved the voice cast. Loved the voice cast. They need to cast Judy Greer as the adult version of 
her character. Like they just they just do because her voice is forever in my brain as that character. That I thought it was very nicely done since it's written kind of in that podcast format to have it all narrated by different people. I just loved it. It was beautiful. Just the experience of listening to it. The next one I listened to was The Echo Wife, which I thought was really good. I, I thought The Echo Wife was really good. It was short, sweet, to the point, and the twist was not something I saw coming. So I appreciated it. Do I think it wrapped up a little cleanly? Yes, but I'm not going to argue with it because, again, the, the amount of book you got, it made sense. The next book I read was F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby, and that was because I had to teach it. The next thing I read was The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman, and that was read for the Buzzwordathon, which was a color. I'm so sad um, because I hate getting disappointed. I, I just hate continually getting disappointed by authors. Charlotte Perkins Gilman was like hella racist. Um, and that story is so good. We just taught it last week to the students. We did that one and we paired it with an Ernest Hemingway short story called Soldier's Home. So we talked about postpartum depression and psychosis, which the old wallpaper discusses, and PTSD, which is what Soldier's Home is about. And so, I, you know, I'm doing some research on Charlotte here because I want to know what she was inspired to write it by. And I knew that part of it was like the rest cure at the time for women who were experiencing hysteria. And then I found out just her just awful opinions about just the status of race and who was worth something and who wasn't. And I'm like, that's, I hate, I hate this. I hate when you, when you like something and you appreciate an author's craft and you find out, God, they were really awful. And the death of the author is not something that can happen. You know what I'm saying? Because you're always going to bring in biases and ideas from your own life, especially the yellow wallpaper. She was very influenced by things going on at the time. And so you can't just fully divorce her from her opinions. So now when I teach that, I'm going to have to be very clear about what I do and do not support as far as what this author herself supported. Um, but that's just as kind of a, a warning to people. I still recommend reading the short story. I think it is an excellent portrayal of someone's slow descent into just mental degradation based on, you know, the standards at the time. But just understand that the author is, you know, God, cliche, problematic. The next book I listened to was The Night Swim by Megan Golden. I thought it was great. It was great. It was really well done. I said it was like bear town but in the summer in North Carolina which by the way who was going to tell me that happened in North Carolina like who was going to I could picture the places it was at like I could mentally I'm like oh yeah it, this is clearly here um but it was really good the next thing I read was also really good and I really like I don't know I probably got more out of it than a regular reader would but it was almost Maine and it's the like YA novelization of the play and I was in the play with my husband um and so it was just kind of nice to read it they added another story and changed some stuff with some of the others but they added a new story that I thought was very well done and fit in very nicely with the others and I can see why it wouldn't work on stage because of the ending of it um if you don't know about Almost Maine there's some sort of um fabulism elements to it that everything's not quite normal that night that things happen. The character I played in the in the play, she was carrying her heart broken in a paper bag. And the guy at the end is like fixing her heart. That's not real, but it, like the symbolism of it was real in the moment. So in the story that they added, the two characters are like floating in the air at the end where they're dancing. And that's just not something you'd be able to do in a theater that's putting on Almost Main. You put on Almost Main when you don't have a lot of set or actors. So it, it was really nicely done, though. I would recommend it. I think it's a very good little YA novel. It's very diverse um, and has a lot of different uh, perspectives in it that would be good for youth to experience. The next thing I read was Full Dark, No Stars by Stephen King. And uh, it was really good. There's some really strong stories in there. Again, my reviews, I think I tackle each one individually. The next thing I read was Angel Catbird by Margaret Atwood, which is a comic book based on a man who gets superpowers from an owl and a cat. It's not great. Uh, the next thing I listened to was We Are Okay by Nina LaCour, and that was for a video that I did on this channel where I read the Enneagram types that um, Books and Lala she recommended, and I'm a type 4, wing 5, so the only two books in her recommendations I hadn't read were We Are Okay and Wilder Girls. So I read both of those. We Are Okay was really good. I liked it better than Wilder Girls. So that was next. And, you know, I got, it got like a three. It was okay. 
I read The Firekeeper's Daughter, which I thought was amazing. It's, it's so good. It's worth the hype. Go read Firekeeper's Daughter. The next thing I read was A Wrinkle in Time. That, again, was for the Buzzwordathon, which was the word time. So I read A Wrinkle in Time, and that still holds up. It's actually a really good little fantasy, and I'm looking forward to finishing the series. The next thing I listened to was This Way Madness Lies, and that was a really just great achievement of audiobookdom because it was narrated a lot of it was narrated by the authors themselves, but otherwise it had decent voice casting, and some of the books were just so good. Some of the stories in there, I really, really liked the Merchant of Venice story and the Romeo and Juliet one, and I highly recommend them in my review. The next thing I read was Death of a Salesman, and that's because we taught it. We taught Death of a Salesman um, but right before we did the Gatsby unit. We did my unit on America Sings and Poetry, and then we did the Death of a Salesman play, and then we did Great Gatsby, the novel. So it was it was a really nice long unit, and the kids really liked the stories. It was a little confusing to read a play out loud to them, but we, we got it done. The next thing I listened to was Clara and the Sun. It was all right. Um, it probably was more literary fiction than I was prepared to deal with, I think is, is where that stands. I read on my ebook uh, Six of Crows, and I need to pick up the second one at some point because it was really good. really enjoyed it. Um, I listened to the new audio version of The Great Gatsby. It's narrated by Sean Astin, and it was very good. So I listened to that the week I taught Great Gatsby. Um, well, I taught Great Gatsby for three weeks, but like the second week I taught it, I listened to that on the way to school. So that was nice. I read Girl Made of Stars for the Buzzword-a-thon for, I think it was April? Was it April? Anyway, Girl Made of Stars, because the word stars and like space-related words. And uh, it was also really good. It was kind of heartbreaking. Um, a really difficult read, but I, I, I think it would be very beneficial for some folks to read that. Um, I read The Handmaid's Tale, graphic novel. Beautiful. I've, I've talked about that in a video here. I think I held up and showed it. A lovely novel, and the, the soft illustrations contrast a really difficult story very well. Uh, but obviously content warnings for like images of things that you only get sort of suggestions of in the text. The next thing I listened to was The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. Fantastic. Loved it. Um, very good voice acting and paranormal sort of thriller mystery. Really appreciated it. The next thing I read was Big Little Lies. It lives up to the hype. I love it when things not only live up to the hype, but when I don't get spoiled for stuff that's pretty old. That show and that book have been out for a long time, and I didn't know anything about what was happening, and it was great. The next thing I listened to was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. It was great. If you were going to absorb that media, I would also recommend that on audiobook. I think both narrators did a great job. No, all three narrators did a good job. Yeah, because there's a girl that comes on and reads like the articles and stuff. But it was very well done, and I, it was just kind of a bittersweet story. Um, and I'm looking forward to maybe rereading it, if not this year, then next year, to see if I can appreciate it more, knowing what I do about Evelyn by the end. The next book I finished was Legend Born by Tracy Dion. Um, I loved it by the end. The pacing was a little slow for me in the start and, and like jerky kind of stop start. It's like when my dad drives and he's used to driving a motorcycle. So he, he kind of like feathers stuff weird. That's what it felt like at the beginning. And then it hit its stride around the halfway point And I had no problem. I can't wait for the second one to come out. The next one I listened to was Every Value Break by Peter Swanson. This is probably the least successful book I've read this year. I just didn't, I, I got what it was going for and some of the parts were good, but it just, it didn't, it didn't resonate. It felt very pandering in some places and I just didn't appreciate that. And especially from like a male author, it's like he, he was trying to aim for a certain audience and I'm like, don't do that. Just, just write the book. The next thing I read was Later by Stephen King. It's another hard case, like, crime novel, uh, just like The Colorado Kid and Joyland. So if I'm going to rank them, because I've read all three of them now, I would say Joyland, Later, Colorado Kid. Uh, Joyland is superior to all these. It takes place in North Carolina, and it's, it's great. Uh, but Later is also very good. It's about a boy who can see dead people. So there's that. And the horror at the end of it is just... Ugh. Um, I read The Awakening by Kate Chapon, or, or rather I listened to it on audiobook, and that's when I had to slow down because she had a very distinct accent, and it was very good. The Awakening is not, you're not going to like the main character, but that's not the point. So, don't listen to the reviews who are like, she's a hateful character and she's not relatable. She's not supposed to be. Uh, it's, it's about something bigger than her, so just read the book. Next book I read was Home Fire. 
um, which is a retelling of Antigone through a lens of a family of British Muslims. And it was beautiful. It was heartbreaking. And you should read it. It's very quickly done. It uh, has a lot of different perspectives. And I just appreciate the treatment they gave to the nuance of it, um, the story itself, because telling it the way they did easily could have been a very, like, black and white affair, and it wasn't. I feel like it was done very, very well. The very last thing I finished was Everything I Never Told You, and it was, again, these books centered around grief or someone dying, and I just, the review I wrote is going to tell you more than I can tell you in this video, but I thought it was very well done. I thought it was a lovely little literary fiction mystery book and it read very quickly but everyone got the development they needed that's it this is a quick little video i'm posting this one and then in a couple of days i'm going to have a haul video for my classroom library that hope people enjoy and i've got some other fun stuff planned we'll see what i'm able to do as far as filming and uh like capacity for editing but otherwise uh have a great day thank you for watching